Hi everyone, it's Miss Wendy from the Lakeshore Museum Center. Welcome to another virtual story time with our Little Learners STEM Play and Learn. Um, this is hopefully going to be our last virtual story time um, because coming in July, we are hoping to do both of our um, meetings as in-person meetings. Um, so if you haven't had a chance you will be able to sign up with an Eventbrite link for July and August. We will be meeting still on the second and fourth Thursday of each month, and that theme is water. Now for this month's theme, we have been talking about turtles, and the book that we chose for our theme is Turtle Splash Countdown at the Pond. It is a great book. If you have not picked yours up, um, please do. It will help your little ones with counting, um, and it's a great bedtime story. Um, not only can you pick that up at the museum, you can also pick up your craft kit um, for this story time, which is a paper plate turtle. Um, in your kit, you're going to have a paper plate, a template um, for your kiddos to cut out the tails and the feet and the head, and you'll also have these little um, tissue paper so that they can decorate his shell. If you guys have sparkles, stickers, anything else at home, um, feel free to really decorate this turtle's shell a lot. Today our book, that we're gonna be reading is The Legend of Mackinac Island. It's by Kathy Jo Wargan. Um, she also wrote um, The Legend of Sleeping Bear Dunes. Um, and so this is a really great book with some beautiful illustrations. So here we go. Long, long ago, Earth was a quiet place, covered entirely with water. There were no mountains or valleys. There were no forests or meadows. There was nothing but one brilliant blue sea with a dark, murky bottom far, far below. But life upon the giant world of water was dazzling and bright. It was filled with the rustling of waves, the splashing of ducks, and the jumping of quick silvery fish. There were many animals here, and their days were filled with laughter and friendship. See, looks like a mama mallard and a, a daddy mallard. In the morning, loons carried soft, downy chicks on their backs, keeping them warm and dry. In the afternoon, otters played silly games upon the water, rolling their long bodies between the curve of the waves. There's that mama loon and her babies. And while the other animals played, beavers bustled back and forth, slapping their flat and shiny tails upon the water, all around them, wee little muskrats tried to keep pace with their small flat paws paddling eagerly against the waves. You see the two beavers and the smaller muskrats? In the midst of these fast and playful animals was one special creature who was quiet and slow. His name was Mackinac. He was the oldest, wisest, and largest painter turtle to have lived in the blue, great blue water. Ooh, look at that painter turtle. Every day the turtle floated upon the water in the calm and steady way, and as he floated he would lift his large head, wrinkled neck out of the water and blink his he carried the wisdom of centuries in his words and always greeted his friends with a slow, upward smile. Who's his friend in this picture? It looks like it might be the otter. The animals were always delighted when he floated by because if they were cold or tired, he would let them climb upon his back to rest in the warm afternoon sun. And if they were sad, he would sing sweet and happy songs to cheer them. And sometimes when the air was still and the moment was just right, all of the animals would gather around him and listen carefully as he told them wonderful stories about their great world of water. One day he swam steadily towards the other animals. His old weather face appeared quite serious. And in a low, broad voice, he told the animals how the great spirit of the sky said that now was the time to build a beautiful piece of land for all the animals to rest upon. He then told the animals that one of them must dive through the depths of the water and bring up one handful of rich, wet soil and place it on his back. 
This, he said, would be the beginning of a brand new world. The animals chattered with excitement, and the old wise turtle raised his head and spoke clearly to all of them. I shall give to you a special home upon my weathered back, where rivers run beneath the sun in red and gold and black, to rest upon the water blue, a land so new, a land so new. They're imagining what that land would look like. Naturally, Loon wanted to be the first to try because she was the most loyal of all creatures and always willing to prove her devotion. She pulled her broad wings tight to her back, stretched her long graceful neck, and pointed herself towards the bottom of the world. Moments later, she was up again, without a grain of soil in her bill. Disappointed, she hopped aboard the turtle's back to dry her feathers in the sun. Here she goes, trying to dive down deep. Who do you think will be next? Beaver, the most resourceful and the hardest working of all animals, decided that he should be the next to try. He stiffened his back and twitched his nose and with a loud slap of his tail, dove deep towards the bottom of the world. Small waves rolled over the spot where Beaver disappeared. A little while later, he rose to the surface, not holding nothing in his paws. He climbed onto the turtle's back and closed his eyes in sadness. <gasps> there goes the beaver. Who's going to be next? Then Otter decided it was her turn to try. With a twist and a turn and a flip of the tail, she plunged into the depths far below. Otter bobbed up to the surface several times, each time diving deeper and deeper. Eventually, she reappeared with no soil in her forefeet. She slipped onto the great turtle's back and let out a long, soft sigh. Oh, poor Otter. She tried. Who's left? Do you guys remember who's left to try? The animals rested quietly on the turtle's back, feeling very sad. While they were sitting there, Muskrat came swimming by, and the weary animals told him about their struggle to grab a handful of soil from the bottom of the world. Muskrat was eager to help his friends, so he told the turtle and the other animals that he would dive to the dark and murky bottom, far, far below. Loon, Beaver, and Otter laughed loudly because Muskrat was the smallest and most humble of creatures. His paws were tiny and his back was weak. Surely he would fail. But Mackinac did not laugh because he was kind and wise and because he was a good friend to all animals. He smiled at Muskrat and nodded his head in a slow, gentle way, approving of Muskrat's offer. But the animals were still doubtful as they watched Muskrat take one long, deep breath, <sighs> filling his round cheeks until they could hold no more. Then, much to their dismay, the little Muskrat closed his eyes and dove into the water. Splish, splash, swish. Little round bubbles popped up all around him as he made his way to the dim bottom far below. Loon, Beaver, and Otter peered into the water, certain that Muskrat would never reach the bottom. They knew the journey was very, very long and very, very dark, and they believed he would return quickly with no soil in his grasp. They waited, and they watched, but no Muskrat. Can you see them looking down into the water from Turtle's back? The animals waited some more, but no muskrat. Time passed and they began to worry. They felt sad that they had laughed so cruelly at their little friend. Loon let out a long mournful cry, no muskrat. Beaver folded his busy hands and lowered his broad dark face, no muskrat. Otter stiffened her body and sat straight and still and was unusually serious, still no muskrat. And as they waited, dusk began to fall, and the water shimmered in the fading sunlight. The animals searched every wave and swell. They listened to each splash and ripple, hoping to see Muskrat, but he did not reappear. The sky began to fill with the whisper of clouds, and all the animals were hushed with sadness. A giant tear rolled slowly out of the corner of the turtle's eye. Loon, Beaver, and Otter saw the tears slip down the great turtle's cheek and began to weep softly in the moonlight for the loss of their friend and the hope of a new land. But, 
just then. What do you think is going to happen? Whoosh! Up popped Muskrat. Like, and there he comes. He flew to the top of the water with tremendous force, and his body was trembling with all its might. His eyes were open wide, and his cheeks were nearly blue, but wedged in the grasp of his small furry paws was the rich, dark soil that was needed to make the beautiful new land. Hooray! Hooray! shouted the animals. Mackinac nodded his large, round head in approval and said, I give to you a special place where sunshine crowns the land, where flowers bloom like brilliant jewels everywhere you stand. To float upon the water blue, a home for you, a home for you. All of the animals watched in awe as Muskrat quickly tossed the handful of soil upon the great turtle's back. Magically, the soil grew and grew and grew all around them. Rocks and trees and flowers appeared and sunlight poured down upon the bright new land, growing in the middle of the deep blue water. Can you see that land growing on the turtle's back? And as the island blossomed, a low, quiet voice of Mackinac could be heard from all around. Time will now stand still, my friends, with an island rich and rare. And though we must part deep in your heart, my presence will always be there. A special land that's edged in blue, I leave this for you, I leave this for you. The animals were happy to have such a lovely place to rest. It was a beautiful, splendid island, a glistening paradise of peace and friendship. As the animals admired their new home, they noticed that Mackinac was gone. They began to miss the turtle very much, so in the spirit of his friendship, they talked about how kind and wise he was and how he always shared his back as a place to rest. As they talked, they realized that the turtle was not really gone because they saw his large round back in the shape of the island and heard his deep familiar voice roll through the rocks that lined the shore. And with every wave and billow, they heard their old friend say, I give you this brilliant land, a place for peace and rest. May forest path and gentle waves call you as their guest. May sunshine drip like honey gold and sweetness fill the air. May diamonds fall upon the lake and always glimmer there. I leave you with an island home, my sweet and treasured friends, forever there upon my back where splendor never ends. And so, to honor their wise old friend, they called the beautiful land Mekinuk Island, the place of the great turtle's back. Look at that, do you see the turtle shake? story. I hope that you enjoyed the legend of Mackinac Island and I hope if you haven't ever been to Mackinac Island that you get a chance to go. It's a magical place to be. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this little virtual story and don't forget to pick up your craft packets and your turtle splash book if you haven't already and then be sure to sign up um, through the Eventbrite link for our in-person play group on the fourth Thursday of this month. So I hope to see you then. Have a wonderful day.